today we are going to talk about private endpoints. In the previous video from the diagram, if you have seen, you can easily understood we talked about service endpoint. So in continuation with the security specialist series, we are going to explore private endpoint. And because both service endpoint and private endpoint kind of solve the same kind of problem, help us access the Azure PaaS services or managed services securely. So that's the that's the reason I have the same diagram just to understand. So let me take you through the diagram. We have Azure here. In the Azure subscription, we have created a virtual network. We have one subnet and there is one virtual machine running in that subnet. We have three managed services, Azure PaaS services as app service, storage or SQL. These services are uh, managed services or PaaS services, hence they have, they have their own list of public IPs. We also understand these through service tags, right? So these are the public IPs representation right here. Now, just for the sake of this video, because we have already covered the concept in the previous one, it will take a second or two. If somebody from outside the uh, Azure try to access these, it will access over the public IP through the internet, through the public internet, right? And whenever public internet comes in the picture, we all know it's not that safe. So if somebody is trying to access storage, it will go through the public internet or SQL, it will go through the public internet. And that is the challenge we are solving because we want these services to be part of our virtual network. Or if that is not possible, at least we can access these services through a private connection or through the Azure backbone. So what happens? If there is a this VM in the Azure virtual network, try to access the same services. If we have not implemented any kind of uh, endpoints, then this will again go like this. Through the internet, which is again not a good idea. So in the previous chapter, uh, in the previous video, we understood service endpoint where our access from the Azure Virtual Network is not going over the internet, but it is going through the Azure backbone. This is Azure backbone, all right? Now, earlier it was this VM is still talking to the app service, but via Azure backbone. So the routings were happening, right? When you enable the service endpoint on the subnet and you are restricting uh, through the network firewall, which is available on the past services. But still these public IPs are associated with these services. All right, so now the things are going to be more secure or change rather how because now we want or we are bringing this this app service or azure storage into the virtual network yes this is what we are going to do through private endpoint we are getting these things into the virtual network and how are we getting these things into the virtual network because we are assigning them, we are assigning them. Let me highlight it through this maybe. A private endpoint. A private endpoint. Private endpoint. So what is this private endpoint? Well, we'll explain you simply. Private endpoints. OK, so. 
And this private endpoint is nothing. It's just the network interface which is assigned to these services and it has the private IP address from your virtual network. It's that simple. So if we have to define this Azure private endpoint is a networking feature that provides a secure and private connection between Azure virtual network and Azure services or, or between the virtual network and services hosted into another VNet. That's a different story, but here, but it suffices both things. So the connection is made through private link. So service still there, but the service will get one private endpoint because it will assign a NIC. And this particular area is, we can say link. This is the private link. Okay. So now the service is inside your virtual network. In service endpoint, we were taking our virtual network to the service, but now we are getting, bringing this app service to our virtual network because we are assigning a private endpoint on, on a NIC, the IP address on a NIC, and that is connected to the app service via private link. So these services we are bringing into the virtual network. I hope this concept is clear as compared to service endpoint as well. We will though talk about the differences between these, but for now let's focus on the private endpoint. So once again, private endpoint create a network interface in your virtual network for a specific Azure service resources, just like for one for the app service, one for the storage, one for the SQL, which assigns a private IP address. This is a private IP address from your subnet, okay? And this setup effectively brings the service into your virtual network, treating it as if it were hosted directly within your virtual network and isolated from the public internet. So that's what the private endpoints concept. So how exactly it works when you create a private endpoint, you specify the Azure service or resource like storage or app service that you want to connect privately. You also select the subnet within your virtual network where the private endpoint will be located. Then there is a private IP assignment, the service, the service resource assigned a private IP address from the subnets address range. This IP address becomes the resource identifier, resource identifier within your virtual network. So this private IP will represent this app service. So that is the reason there is something happens which is called DNS integration to ensure the private connection is seamlessly used by clients within the virtual network. Azure automatically updates the DNS zone to resolve the service resources FQDN to the private IP address. All right, so DNS integration will happen. It will create the private zone DNS where FQDN of, of these managed services will be resolved to private IP address. So it would be a seamless transition. So how the traffic will flow? Well, traffic from VM or service within the virtual network to the Azure resource travels directly within the Azure network. Okay, because now this traffic from VM will not go like this, will not go like this. It will simply go to the private IP. Okay, even if through the FQDN, it will resolve to private IP, traffic will go to the private IP and it will be reached to the app service through a sh very short path over the private link, which got created. Okay, so there is no exposure to the public internet, and of, of course it will enhance the security and potentially reducing the latency. Now the question is, what if there is on-premises? So let's suppose there is on-premises and there is a VPN connection, because this is something which is very interesting and there is this gateway here and there is a VPN connectivity between these. 
Now, how the traffic will follow now? Now, in this scenario, if somebody tried to access from the on-premises, it will go via VPN, it will enter the virtual network of ours, and then it will go to the private endpoint. And it can access securely Azure services through the private endpoint or privately not over the public internet. Okay, so this is the concept of private endpoint. And if we need to uh, see what all benefits this private endpoint provides us, well, because this is a security course and we cannot and we should not miss the main or primary agenda, which is the security. Now we got the concept and we can easily relate it with the security. Uh, a lot of things, a lot of points, you will tell me very easily when I narrate you something. For example, private endpoint assigns private IP address from your virtual network to Azure service, enabling direct access to service over the Azure backbone network without traversing the public internet. So what kind of benefit we are getting? Well, of course, it we are getting direct and private access, which is enhancing the security. All right, if we say, this direct connection that we are getting by enabling service to be accessed privately. What what all is happening now? Well, if you think little deeper, private endpoints limit the exposure of your resources to the public internet, thus reducing the attackable attackable surface area, or we can say blast radius, or rather minimized attack surface area. OK. So we are just finding out all the benefits from the concept that we have learned. Now, let's suppose there is an organization who wants to utilize all the beautiful, wonderful services that cloud offers like past services, but they do not want their traffic to go publicly because of some compliance or data sovereignty. Then I know you got this in your mind. Private connectivity helps in meeting compliance requirements that mandate data to be transmitted and accessed within a secure private network adhering to the data sovereignty laws. So it will also help you maintaining the compliance and data sovereignty. Very nice. Now, this because this is a NIC, there is an IP. So private endpoint can be seamlessly integrated with the Azure network security tools like NSGs and Azure Firewall. NSG, which was not earlier when this private endpoint was introduced, but now you can apply the NSGs and Azure Firewall. So it's a seamless integration. It is, it is not like if you're using, you're compromising on something. Integration with Azure security like NSG and firewalls. So not that limitation, of course. Now, of course, if the on-prem we talked about, so for hybrid cloud setups, private endpoints facilitate secure and private access to Azure services from on-prem networks through VPN or express route, keeping internal traffic of the public internet. So we can have secure hybrid connectivity as well to the Azure services, Azure managed services. All right, well, these are uh, some good examples. Now let's complete this video by explaining everything through a scenario. So what is the scenario? The scenario is a company has an Azure SQL database that it wants to make accessible only from its Azure hosted application and on-premises network without exposing the database to the public internet. Sounds absolutely familiar. I hope so. <laughs> well, meanwhile, let me make it a box around here and write it down the benefits or other security benefits. So we got the scenario the company creates what to fulfill the scenario private endpoint for the azure sql database within the virtual network hosting the 
application. You can see this is the same SQL and this is the same private endpoint here on the diagram. Now the private IP address is assigned to the SQL database and DNS within the virtual network automatically resolves the database FQN to the private IP address. The company configures its on premises DNS to resolve the databases FQDN to the private IP, enabling secure private access from the on premises. So there is one more thing on the on premises DNS. There is a little configuration that needs to be done. You can have the conditional forwarders so that it will <clears throat> go to this private IP. All right, or you can configure the DNS. Now. What else is needed? NSG rules are updated to allow database traffic from the application subnet because NSG is, is something that we can apply here as well, along with the Azure Firewall. So the public access to the Azure SQL database is disabled, ensuring all access is through the private endpoint. This is completely disabled from public and we all are good to go now in summary azure private endpoint provides a secure private connectivity solution for accessing azure services significantly enhancing the security by isolating service access to within a virtual network and eliminating exposure to the public internet i hope this was interesting and informative well thank you for watching and you guys have a wonderful day bye bye